Good morning, everyone. Give us one moment here. We're getting uh, everything set up. I hope everyone has jumped off to an amazing third quarter and is ready for an exciting summer. Okay. And my co-host, you can help watch and as admit people as they show up on the screen. That's fine now. Good morning, everyone. We're super excited to kick off the third quarter with Women Warriors winning the business battle and our very own Women Veteran Pitch winners. So we're so excited to get you connected to everybody. And we have a lot of updates for the third quarter. So I wanna get right into it so that we can get into our program. So first, thank you for staying connected over the past three months. We've engaged nearly 500 women veterans and we are so proud to be your resource connected to relevant information and resources. To this end, July is our staging month and we wanna get your input on what comes next. So first, we will relaunch our Monday morning message in August. And we wanna know, do you want us to bring back some of the speakers or start this summer off with some brand new information and speakers on this program? You can share with us via our, our email. You can also share in the chat today what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you hope to see over the summer. We will also be bringing back Trending Thursdays Tips, which has been a series of different uh, technical tools that you can use for your business. Over the summer, though, we are going to run a full series for each month. So let us know what you're interested in learning and what is going to be the best information for you to receive. We want to make this more interactive. We want to make sure that it's relevant to your business. And so the only way we can do that is if you give us your input. So make sure you let us know what works for you. Second, we're going to be putting out our connection so make sure you don't miss it is our monthly newsletter that gives you a recap of the previous quarter and a preview of the upcoming quarter in that newsletter we will be opening applications and giving you more details on our next level business transformation program we are very fortunate this year to receive funding from north texas cares Texas Capital Bank and BBBA to bring you a mini master series over the summer that will provide you grant funding as well as critical technical assistance. Now, if you wanna know more about this program, make sure you're connected. So if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, get signed up on our website at veteranwomensec.org. That's veteranwomensec.org because I'm not gonna tell you more now. I need you to stay connected. Finally, you may know we faced a number of challenges with internet at the center, and we want you to know challenge conquered. We will have full internet across the center before the end of the summer, and we will begin setting up tours and getting you booked for 2020 January as your new place of work, or maybe as early as the fall, depending on how we move forward with COVID-19. Again, to stay connected and know how to access this resource, make sure you sign up for our newsletter on our website at veteranwomensec.org. That's veteranwomensec.org. So we're into our program and I wanna bring to the forefront um, is, Ms. Gory, there you are. So I wanna bring to the forefront one of our SBA um, partners and he's gonna give you an update on what's happening with the SBA and resources that you can connect. So you have the stage. Thank you, VR. Thank you for allowing me to come in such on a last minute basis. I really appreciate it. But this is some very vital information. But before I get started, I just wanna announce that VR Small is our 2020 
a veteran small business champion uh, for the U.S. Small Business Administration's Dallas-Fort Worth District Office. So we are proud of the hard work that you do, the commitment that you have to veterans and particularly women veterans. So we definitely are honored to have you as our 2020 Veterans Champion of the Year. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, the two programs that I want to talk about are the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, and the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Uh, so the Paycheck Protection Program originally, originally ended on June the 30th. Uh, the deadline has been extended to August 8th. So there's about $100 billion still left in the program that businesses and nonprofits can take advantage of if you have not already. So the way that the program works is these are loans that are go up to 10 million with an interest rate of 1% over a course of five years. Uh, but the really important part of the Paycheck Protection Program or PPP is the forgivable part. So we really want businesses and nonprofits to really take advantage of the forgiveness because we don't want you to have to pay the loan back. Uh, so the way the forgiveness works is if you use at least 60% for payroll costs, uh, hence the name Paycheck Protection Program. So that's solely why it was designed and put in place is to help you keep your employees on payroll or if you've laid them off, bring them back. Uh, so if you use at least 60% on payroll costs, then that portion will be forgiven. We have expanded the operating costs so you could use the funds for your expenses, such as your rent, your interest on your mortgage, your utilities, including your telephone, your electric, your internet access, and your transportation costs. All those are considered uh, operating expenses. So you're able to use not more than 40% for that purpose. So that 60 plus 40 is a potentially 100% forgivable loan. And that's what we really want you to take advantage of. You're able to use the, the proceeds over a course of 24 weeks after disbursement of the loan. Uh, so that, that, that was actually extended as well. It was eight weeks, but uh, we extended it to 24 weeks. You have to apply through a banking institution. It's recommended that you start with the banking institution that you may have a relationship with already. However, that's not required. Uh, there are institutions that are out doing paycheck protection program loans to new clients. And VR, I'll send you a list of local banking institutions that have committed to helping new clients and you can feel free to disperse it however you feel uh, needed. Uh, so that's the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP. The next program is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Uh, this was the first program available to businesses that were affected by COVID-19. Uh, it's directly through SBA. So you apply through SBA. You go to covid19relief.sba.gov or just go to sba.gov and follow the COVID-19 uh, relief um, tabs and you're able to apply directly on SBA's website. These are loans that go up to 2 million with an interest rate of 3.75% for for-profits, 2.75% for nonprofits uh, over a course of 30 years. Uh, the first payment is deferred for uh, 12 months. So you don't have to worry about making a payment until 12 months. The use of proceeds for this loan are working capital uh, needs. So you're able to use it for those utility costs as well as payroll. But in addition, you're able to use these proceeds for paying off any fi fixed debts that your business has. Uh, so all of these programs are available to small businesses, nonprofits, self-employed, sole proprietors, and independent contractors that are considered 1099. Uh, so those are the bulk of the programs. Just to give you an update uh, as it relates to the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, so far, uh, we have done about 4,314 loans in the city of Dallas uh, to small businesses in the amount of 150,000 to 10 million. And that has saved about 239,000 jobs just right here in the city of Dallas. Uh, so that's why we want you to take advantage of this program so that you have the proceeds to continue operating your business and most importantly, paying your employees and keeping them uh, on payroll. Uh, so with that, VR, I will turn it back over to you and uh, I will take any questions whenever you see uh, the need for that. If I need to wait till the end, no problem. Well, actually I had a couple of questions that individuals have posed to me and I just wanna clarify, you might've already mentioned it. I just wanna make sure it's clarified since they did ask me. So is there a timeline on spending the money 
for either of these programs? Because at one point there was eight weeks and then they had extended it. So can you just let us know if there's a timeline to expend the funds that they may have received or that they're applying for? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So uh, the, for the Paycheck Protection Program, the extension on loan proceeds have been extended. It was eight weeks, but now it's 24 weeks. So you have a longer period to use those funds for uh, the recovery of your business. For the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, uh, it's over a course of about six months. We're still uh, determining what that uh, actual uh, determination is going to be, uh, but that program is there in the, for the long run, uh, and you're able to apply for that program uh, as uh, up to December, but depending on the amount of funds that are that are left in the program, so and, uh, that's and, and does the timeline begin upon receipt of the money, like once the check is sent to them or once they cast the check, when does the timeline begin? Correct, yes, so the clock starts ticking the time that the funds are dispersed. Okay. Uh, so the moment that you receive them in your account is when the clock start, starts ticking. And will all of this be sent directly to their account? Is everything set up as auto payment or are people expecting checks for either of these programs? Yeah, so everything will be direct deposit. So you have to have a bank account with both programs. Uh, so yeah, uh, the best thing to do if you don't have a bank account, get one set up as soon as possible. So now I heard some nonprofits say with the EIDI program that they received grant funding and they didn't receive notification that they received it. Is, th is that the process? You just need to kind of watch your account or should we look for notification that we received these grant funding? Yeah, so with the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, there was a, a first part of that called an advance, which was 1,000 per employee up to 10,000. And that was considered as a grant uh, it was the forgivable portion of the economic injury disaster loan, and uh, you're correct. So if you received that advance, you would not have received any notice that you got that advance. You would just have mm -hmm. to uh, be wait. You have to wait to hit your your bank account, and you'll see that uh, entered in your bank account. Oh, so nonprofits, check your accounts. <laughs> you check your accounts. Um, Ahmed, can I ask a question? Email. Yes. Hi, uh, Ahmed Christina Mortel with Texas Veterans Commission. Um, I had two questions. The first question is, if you were originally turned down, can you reapply? That's my first question. I don't know. Uh, some people didn't get approval based on credit or other issues. Is it possible now that since there's still $100 billion left that they could still leverage the program? Yeah. So if you were, den were you denied the Paycheck Protection Program or Economic Injury Disaster Loan? Um, it's for my clients, and I would think I think it's the they were originally denied the PPP. Yeah. So if you were denied the PPP, uh, my suggestion is to work with that institution to figure out what that reason was and see if you could get that corrected. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. The second option is if you felt like that institution wasn't serving you to the best of your needs, you are able to apply at multiple institutions. We actually encourage that so you can have a better chance at accessing the funds. It's just the first application that SBA receives. It's the one that we're going to go with. So that's with the Paycheck okay. Protection Program. If you were denied for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, you can submit a reconsideration. Uh, for uh, that particular loan. And it depends on the reasoning that you were denied. And they should tell you if it was for credit, if it was for um, verifiable information, if it was for credit, then that means your credit score was low. Uh, we look at experience mm -hmm. credit report. So you can uh, ask for a co-signer to co-sign, uh, or you could get your credit uh, worked out where your credit score would go up higher, which is very unlikely in a short period of time. But the best thing is probably get that co-signer. If it was for unverifiable information, uh, we need your 2019 tax returns to verify uh, your profit and loss and your expenses and things like that. But you could submit a recommendation. Okay, then wait. Go ahead. Okay, I'll let them know that. Um, my last, my follow-up to that is I still have some clients who have their application in the pipeline, so to speak, and haven't heard from the SBA. Um, so will people who are, we, obviously you're still working loans. Um, so is it understandable that they're still being worked even though they haven't received a final okay or non-okay? Or so yes. Or disapproval, uh, I mean. And I'm assuming we're talking about the economic injury disaster loan, idle loan? Correct. 
Yes. So with yeah. economic injury disaster, loan, yes, we are processing a lot of. So as I mentioned before, that that's a SBA program. So we are uh, using SBA employees to process those. So we don't have the manpower like paycheck protection. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is the first time in history that we've gotten a lot of applications. We've got about 30 million applications. So yeah, we're processing those uh, as we receive them. Uh, it takes about four to five weeks to process that. If it's been longer, then uh, have them uh, email me. Uh, I put my email address in the uh, email box, or they could call our district office at 817-684-5500. I add that to the uh, box as well. Um, okay. And uh, we could check the status of the, uh, we could send the, the report over to disaster and see if we could get a status report on what may be holding that loan up. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Bior, I think I see some uh, questions in the chat box. Can you uh, talk about who makes the decision on the amount of a loan for both programs? So with the economic injury, SBA loan officers make the decision based off of the information that you submitted at the time of application, uh, dependent on your profit and loss and your expenses. For the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, it's kind of similar, but it's dealing more with your payroll, uh, your employees and what you pay them and also your expense bill. Um, I, have a question. I have a question, um, if that's okay. BR, is that okay if we take more questions or? You wanna go ahead and ask? Yeah, so um, I, only, I was the only employee that was full-time last year. I had a lot of contract employers and, but the events that were scheduled for this year uh, made it so I needed to hire a new employee. The new employee came on in March, so I don't have those February or any of the others. Is it possible for me to apply for the PPP having that new employee, paying them through the time to keep them on during the last few months with what's been going on? Yeah, so forgiveness with paycheck protection is dependent on uh, your status as you were in business in 2019, or if you were not in business in 2019, uh, what your status was from January to February of 2020. So yeah, if you didn't have those employees during those time periods, then it wouldn't count. Uh, so it's either to keep employees on payroll that you've already uh, already had, or if you laid them off, bring them back. VR, I turn it back over to you. Okay, I'm not think sure that. if we lost her or not. Yeah, um, I do her, have. So. Okay, I have one quick question. Though, sure. what was that uh, minimum credit score? So. It's really dependent on the business needs. We don't really have a minimum. I don't have any information on a minimum credit score, um, but it doesn't hurt to apply for either of the programs. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, so if you're interested in applying, definitely apply. Again, if you are rejected uh, for economic injury disaster loan, you can reconsider. If it is credit issues, uh, try to look for a co-signer uh, for your business. Uh, but the loans are available right now. And we definitely encourage every business and nonprofit, if you haven't done so for either programs, take advantage of both. And you can apply for both programs, by the way. Okay, I want to apologize. Um, I actually got kicked off of Zoom. So I am back. I hope you guys were having a lively conversation. It did continue on Facebook Live. I want to thank you for that update. This information is so critical and so important to our business owners. And I want to encourage everyone um, as Christina said, if you applied and you were denied, you know, please get back in the game. Don't assume that that opportunity is no longer available to you. Um, to all of the people that were looking for the grant, make sure you check your accounts because you won't receive an email. So that will go straight to your, um, to your email account. I mean, to your bank account. And we want to make sure that we, um, Ma, you know, you're welcome to stay and hang out with us. We want to make sure that we get into our networking we know you guys are tired of just listening to us talk to, to you. So we want to give you a chance to talk to each other. We're going to break into breakout rooms. All of our partners from um, Dallas ISD, the Texas Veterans Commission, 
uh, Texas Women's University Center for Women Entrepreneurs and Shirley with Avid Coach. Each will be manning a room and getting you guys connected. So what we're going to do now is go to our breakout rooms. I'm going to stay on the main platform, connect with our Facebook um, attendees and keep them engaged while you guys do some networking. So let's get connected, okay? I hope it didn't, because it kicked me off, I think it made me um, drop my room. So give me one second to get you guys all connected. And I wanna make sure my ladies have their, um, their rooms. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna assign you ladies to a room and then everyone else will get assigned with you. And then who's left? That's it. That should be everybody. All right. I'm opening the rooms. Have fun. All right, for everybody still on Facebook Live, thank you for joining us. I want to go over just very quickly again some of the things that we talked about in the beginning of the session. Number one, this is our third quarter, and we're very excited about our third quarter programming and being able to get you all connected. Uh, one of the things that we're doing in July is our staging month, so we're planning for the rest of the summer. We want your input, though. Uh, we will be relaunching our Monday morning message in August, and we want to know, who do you want to see? Do you want us to invite certain individuals back, or do you want us to continue uh, with some new programming and bring new people into the process? Also, Trending Thursday Tips. We want to move from just kind of these individual sporadic sessions to a monthly series. So tell us what kind of technical tools and resources you need for this summer so we can make sure we get you connected to what is going to be most beneficial to your business. Also, we're extremely thankful this year to receive funding from North Texas Cares as well as Texas Capital and BBVA to launch our next business, our next level business level uh, transformation program. And so we want to make sure that we get you connected to that. And if you want to know more about that, what you can do is sign up for our newsletter. And when you sign up for our newsletter, you'll be able to connect to our programs. Our newsletter should be coming out next week and the application for that program will be in our newsletter. Also, we want to hear more from you about how you see us and how you perceive us as a brand. How can we better serve you? What can we do to better connect to you? We recently did a survey with the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank. And what we found out was really interesting. A lot of veterans are not connecting to programs designed specifically for them. And that includes women veterans. So what can we do to help you connect? How can we help connect you in a way that's really going to work for you? And so you have to tell us that. You have to tell us how we can best connect you, how we can keep you connected so that you can get what you need from us. Now, if you're joining us now, all the ladies are in their breakout rooms and they're connecting and networking. And so we wanna make sure that everybody has a chance to do just that, to connect and to network. So if you wanna join us on Zoom, the link is available. It was provided in all of our Facebook posts. So you can jump right in and get connected to 
us on Zoom and also begin doing your networking. So I'm looking for comments on Facebook just to see if you guys are saying anything, if you need any information from us, um, if there's more that we can do to help you. So definitely let us know how we can be a better service to you. So people are asking, how do you how do you log on to the Zoom link? The Zoom link is in all of our Facebook posts. So just jump to that link and it will take you directly to Zoom if you want to join us on Zoom. So those of you that are asking that question in Facebook, look for any of our Facebook posts, the Zoom link, especially one this morning. The Zoom link is there. It will bring you directly to Zoom so you can get connected and begin networking. All right, I'm looking for other questions. Oh, this is a good question. Eventbrite has changed the way that they connect. So they don't send you a link. Look at your ticket in Eventbrite and it will say, go to the online content. When you arrive at the online content, you will see graphics, our flyer. In the middle of those graphics is an arrow. You click on that arrow and it will take you either to Zoom or to Facebook. At the top of each graphic, we already have Zoom link and Facebook Live link. So just go to your ticket registration, look for where it says online content, click on that. When you arrive at the online content, you will see our graphics. Scroll down till you see the graphic that says Zoom link. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the link for Facebook Live. The very top graphic just takes you back to an overview of the event. Again, this is not a BWEC change. This is the way Eventbrite has changed the way they link to online programming. So again, if you've registered for the event, go to your ticket. In your ticket, it will say online content. When you arrive at the online content, look at the graphics. We have actually labeled our graphics and one says Zoom link, and the other says Facebook Live link. Click, click on the arrow in the middle of the graphics and it will bring you to the Zoom link. All right, so I hope that answered your questions. I'm gonna check Facebook Live again and see if there are any additional questions. But I'm telling you right now how to get connected, how to get connected to us in Zoom. Hey, and, and if this is difficult, pass those comments on to Eventbrite. This is their new process, not ours. So pass that information on to Eventbrite and let them know you'd like to get your links back, just a link to the program and not all of these different uh, clicks and so forth. So that way they can get you connected as soon as possible. as soon as possible. All right, so we wanna talk a little bit to you guys about virtual programming. I know everybody is offering new virtual programming and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So we wanna know how often you wanna see your programming. Our Monday morning message is an opportunity for you to jumpstart your week with new information, not just from our local area, but regionally and nationally, what's happening, what's going on but also Trending Thursday Tips is your tools. That is your chance to get exactly what you need to help move your business forward. We don't wanna overwhelm you with virtual programming, but we wanna make sure we're reaching you with the right programming. So let us know if the timing works for you and also the platforms that we're using. Also, let us know what kind of programming you'd like to see. Everything that we do, we're doing for you. We're not doing for us. So we wanna make sure that you're getting connected and you're getting connected to the resources you need to succeed. Now, for some people, that's a cliche, but that's actually a part of our mission. We're committed to connecting you to the resources you need to succeed, but you've got to tell us what you need so that we can make that connection. So they have about five more minutes in the networking space, and then we're going to close out the rooms. 
So we want to make sure that they have an opportunity to network and get connected. And we also want to make sure that you all get connected. So I see a few of you are coming in and jumping into the process. That's awesome. Thanks for joining us. I hope we made this easier and I hope the explanation on Facebook has given you an opportunity to get connected. Awesome. I see more people jumping on and that's awesome. I'm gonna give you guys a little more time in your room to get connected. That's great. So does anyone have any more questions on Facebook? Well, maybe you guys can share how this, how, how your business is going for you um, doing COVID-19. What can we do differently? How can we help you be more effective? I'm looking for your comments. I'm watching. Okay, again, if there are any more questions about how to log into Zoom, the link is on Facebook. So if you look for our link earlier today, you will find the link for uh, Facebook. And that link will take you straight to Zoom. Okay, so if you still wanna join us, come on over. The link on Facebook will take you straight to Zoom. Yes, if you click on the Zoom link, Zoom does require you to add your name. It's a security issue. So those of you that arrive at Zoom and it says register, most of our computers and technologies will auto uh, populate that space. But if it doesn't, you do need to put your name and email in there. That is a security method for Zoom. So yes, you do need to put your information in there again. So please, um, I'm sorry for the duplication. These are not BWEC requirements. These are event back, Eventbrite and Zoom requirements. So please just follow the process. It's quick and easy. If I've assigned you to a breakout room, please join so you can network and get connected. Breakout rooms will be closing soon. We wanna make sure we try to stay on schedule. We felt a little bit behind with the questions for the SBA, but it was great information and I'm more than happy to get that. Partners. Okay, so we've asked our partners to pick one person from their room for the pitch competition and we are coming out of the rooms in just two minutes. So we'll be back on the main platform. You can join us via Facebook, a jump on to Zoom in just two minutes. Two minutes, we will be back on the main platform. We thank you guys for joining us for Women Warriors winning the business battle in 2020 is definitely a battleground for our businesses, but we're gonna create strategies. We're gonna identify partnerships to win at every turn. It's possible. We're gonna show you how we're gonna get you connected. So make sure you stay connected to the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center. We're here for you, connecting you to the resources you need to succeed. And one more minute, everyone will be returning to the platform. One more minute.
All right, we're headed back to the main platform. For those of you on Facebook Live, again, if you want to join us on Zoom, you can go to our post this morning. The Zoom link is there. Yes, Zoom does ask you to register again. It is a security measure to make sure that everyone coming in is supposed to be here. It's quick and your name, your email, you're registered, you're in. But please follow the links. If you're still having issues with Eventbrite, remember they no longer give you an actual link. You must go to the online platform. That content shows up in graphics. We have our graphics identified as Zoom link and Facebook Live link. Click on the arrow in the middle of the graphics and it will bring you to the appropriate platform. We hope you'll join us in Zoom where we're getting connected at Women Warriors winning the business battle. Again, I'm watching if you have any comments or questions. Someone said they're lost. Tell me how I can help you. Put a question in Facebook Live and tell me how I can help you. If you want to connect to Zoom, register and go to the Zoom link. If you want to continue on Facebook Live, everyone will be back in about 30 seconds on the main platform. Hey, Erica. <laughs> Everybody's coming back. That's awesome. Did you guys have a good time in networking? I sure hope so. We did have a good time. There are some um, tech issues happening. We did lose Tracy Harris. Um, so I don't know if any well, of those are smiling. I'm seeing smiles. So there was some fun that <laughs> happened while you were in those rooms. Even if it was technical difficulty fun, I'm seeing smiles. I'm, I've been watching Facebook and trying to get people connected who are having difficulties getting in. I want to say it to the whole group in case you didn't hear it. Remember, Eventbrite has changed their online platform for connections. So every single time we do an event on Eventbrite, they're going to send you a link that says link to online content. When you jump on that link, all you're going to see is graphics. The first graphic links you back to Eventbrite so you know what the event is. We label our graphics. So the second graphic says Zoom link. Look for the arrow in the middle of that graphic and it'll bring you straight to Zoom. Yes, you do need to put your email and name in again when you get to Zoom because that is a security process. It has nothing to do with BWEC. So these are both Eventbrite and Zoom procedures and not uh, related to BWEC. So just make sure we're paying attention. In this virtual environment, everyone's making changes. So we just need to adapt. So welcome back, everybody. This is awesome. And I want to get right to our 30-second pitch. So do we have all of our partners back? And did you pick someone from your room to participate in the pitch competition? Let me start with Tracy. Did you pick somebody from your room, Tracy? Um, yes, I'm well, we had, yes. Okay, I'm here. We had to, and Tracy said she could, but then we lost Tracy. So I wasn't really sure what to do if she was gonna be able to reconnect. So um, I then selected Erica, but Tracy, I didn't know what to do because you were gone and I wasn't sure if you were going to be able to reconnect or not. Now, That's Tracy okay, was our May winner um, and you get to try out each quarter. So actually we're in a new quarter. So Tracy can't come back and compete again. Uh -huh. um, Shirley, do you have a pick from your room? Well, Tracy Harris was for our group. We didn't know that she wasn't <laughs> because everybody else was not eligible to pitch so she was the only one in our group that uh was eligible christina don't tracy tell me tracy around, ended I... up in your room too <laughs> okay but we had and, uh, chosen of course I America America. to speak so let me get christina been... christina who did you pick well well okay first of all i had the winner from uh last year i mean last month alicia so uh she was already at the top of it uh, top so and then tracy stopped by 
and she went to somebody else's room. The only other person I have is Amy, and she's welcome to do, do it. Um, but we didn't really talk too much about it, and now I don't even see her here. So. <laughs> when did we lose Amy? some people? You guys better jump back on. You know, this is technology. Don't let it um, overwhelm you. This is about getting connected. We're all still learning this process. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. Make it fun. Um, don't let it overwhelm you. This is about women connecting. So we're here for each other. So if you got kicked off, come on, jump back on, get reconnected. Okay, one more person. Who else had a room? Uh, Stephanie, who well, did you I just wanted room? you, VR. VR, I had selected, I had selected Erica then because we lost Tracy. Okay. So oh, Erica. are my winners competing again? I love it. Show them how it's done, ladies. So we have Alicia, Erica, Tracy. Stephanie, do you have someone? Actually, the my Stephanie Lane, I don't think we, we don't qualify for the pitch. Monica, I didn't even get a chance to really interact with Monica to see if she was a business owner or if she wanted to do it. So we can, uh, Monica, I'm not sure if you can unmute your mic and identify whether or not you're a business owner and if you're interested in doing a pitch. Monica, long. Good morning, everybody. Um, I decided in January to start my business. It's not up and running yet. Um, I'm still getting the operation strategies together, just basically trying to dot my I's and cross my T's before I set anything out in the atmosphere. Uh, but the name of my company, I actually have two. Well, wait, 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 now, Monique, are you going to pitch? Because that's not your pitch. So tell us, are you pitching or not? I can. Oh, what's the Okay, all right. So hold on, because you get 30 seconds. And then, you know, our judges, Shirley, and you know what, Michelle, our judge from our, um, our actual competition is here. So Michelle, Holly's not going to be able to jump on too late. So will you join forces with Shirley and uh, judge our 30 second pitch competition? Right now or later? Right now. We're getting ready to do them sure. right now. We got, we got old school. I have Say one again. issue though. I have one issue. What's that issue? People do business with people who they know, like, and trust. If I can't see you, I can't trust you. Yeah, if you're doing your pitch, you have to show yourself. <laughs> anybody that's pitching, you got to show yourself. <laughs> All right. Other than so that, is anybody, is anybody out of the game? Ms. Long, hey, are you going to be able to show us video? Yeah, let me go to my office. <laughs> VR, can we ask Amy, Lindsay, if she wants to try, or, or if not, that's fine. But we didn't really get a chance to. Uh, sure, sure, you can this. ask Amy. We have up the five. So, but I want to get this pitch going. So, Amy, are you in? No, thanks. I'm just gonna listen and learn right now. <laughs> Thank okay. you, ladies. No problem. Thanks, Amy. VR, I don't. I don't have to pitch, VR. You, you don't have to pitch. Okay. No. No problem. Who yes, is that, she Tracy? Does. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. There's always an I never pass up an opportunity to sell. To sell, sell your sell. business, girl. Sell, uh, sell, never sell. pass up an opportunity. Okay, thank you. All right, so order. I'm going to let my prize winners go first to show y'all how it's mm -hmm. done. <laughs> and then I'm going to back it up with my newbies. So everybody here is almost a prize winner. Tracy won last, um, last May. Alicia is our judge winner. Erica is our winner. So Alicia, you took top prize. I'm going to let you go first. You have 30 seconds. At any of your 30 seconds, I'm going to mute you. And I'm going to put you on speaker view, OK? OK. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, I'll tell you when to go. <laughs> go. <laughs> My name is Alicia McKay, and I'm an Air Force veteran, and I believe in service before self. I am the co-owner and co-founder of GXA. We are an IT company that's located in Richardson, Texas. And what is unique about GXA is we provide uh, raving IT support for other small to medium-sized businesses. GXA basically has a myriad of services and solutions that we provide. We are a one-stop shop for delivering men. Ah, Alicia, you at your 30 seconds, baby. <laughs> what? You at your 30 seconds, girl. I'm going to need to cancel Ooh. you there. Now, judges, you're going to do your thing in the background. You guys are communicating with each other in chat. So we're not going to take your comments here. We're going to take your comments in chat. And then when we come back and make the announcement, you'll give us your pieces. Miss Alicia, work it out, girl. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
All right, Erica, give me that smile. You're just about to be up next. I'll tell you when to go. Are you ready? Yes. And I like it. Let's face it, gluten and sugar, it's in everything. And it can be very overwhelming. It was, I live in the South and let me tell you, it's everywhere. And it was a problem for me. So I found it and I like it. We specialize in making mini cheesecakes and candy pecans made with our special, innovative, um, all natural sugar blend. Follow us at andilikeit.com to get more information. Woohoo! Five seconds. Five <laughs> seconds left on the clock, Ladybug. Thank you so much. And we're off to Miss Tracy. She was our winner in May. Tracy, you want to get your face in there a little bit more? We're cutting you off so we can see you. Oh, can you get any? Yeah, there you That's go. The point. Give That's us the point. more. Give us more. <laughs> All right. Are you ready, Tracy? You ready? Well, yeah. Go get them. You know, I was reviewing this resume and I'm finding it difficult to qualify another veteran. Hello, my name is Tracy Harris. I'm the founder of Hope Evolution. And what we do is we help veterans transition from the battlefield to a federal career. And we do this by giving them knowledge on how to determine their eligibility, translate their military skill sets, and navigate USA jobs for, for federal employment so they can continue their federal retirement benefits. Again, Oops, I just got to my stop. I'm jumping off the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. You just lost me. I'm at my stop. I'm jumping off. How you doing, Miss Long? Let me get you on up here. Hello, everybody. Uh, no, I don't want to make you a co-host. I want to spotlight you. Okay. All right, Miss Long. Let me see a little bit more of your. Are you cutting off your neck too? There you go. Okay, give me a second. Let me restart this. Are you ready? Yes. Take it away. Colossians 2, Colossians 9, 6 states, remember this, whoever sows sparingly also reaps sparingly. Also, whoever sows generously will also reap generously. My company, Sow a Seed, S-E-W, is based on this scripture. I believe we all reap what we sow, and with sowing seed, um, I allow you all to learn how to sow just like those sip and paint parties. How many paintings are you going to have on your wall? And with Soul Seed, I teach uh -oh, you. Uh-oh, there we go. But we're going to keep sewing, and we're going to get it down that 30 seconds. Thank you so much. All right, judges, you guys are going to communicate and chat what was happening. And now I need my partner panel, Tracy, uh, Christina, and Kelly's not with us. They were a part of the pitch competition. And I was so excited about this whole partner panel and being able to kind of like, you know, play, you know, sports, give us the take on what was happening. And I miss most of it really managing uh, the program. So ladies, what I want to do is, you know, get you to talk a little bit about what was that experience like being a part of the partner panel? Tracy, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll be glad to start. I loved being a part of the partner panel because we could go and just make a few comments on it. I mean, we were able to listen. There were so many great pitches. Um, even as we uh, had had Erica today, it was like at first there were so many I didn't remember them all. But when it came to cheesecake, man, that, that made her stand out. So it was really fun to hear what everybody had to say in those pitches. And I mean, you had some extraordinary people. So, I mean, it was great and rewarding to hear so many different, really good pitches. All right, Christina, what was the experience like for you? How did you like being the pitch caster, the pitch anchor? <laughs> I enjoyed it because I was so intrigued by uh, the business models. So that's one of my things. I like business model canvas. So I'm always interested in what kind of business model uh, the business owner brings forward. So in the case of, um, I didn't, I only saw the afternoon ones. So in the case of the bookstore, would uh, Words Unite bookstore, that was a pop-up bookstore. So I really thought it was great because they leveraged the AFES program um, and it allowed them the uh, feasibility and the ease to go to the military posts around town or, you know, around the state and even out of the state to sell their book. So I love the fact that they were using the pop-up uh, because it was quite nimble uh, and had low cost up front. There was also the other um, program that I, I can't remember the, the ladies' names, but they had the store 
where you're able to print your marketing materials. Oh, I don't know if yeah. Uh -huh. So I thought that was very innovative because everybody needs promotional items, but they don't need 10,000 of them, right? <laughs> so you need like 525 or 50 or 100. And that's great because they could be personalized for your customer. Or uh, I love the small quantity piece. And I also loved the community piece. And I think for small business owners, um, that is really something that was relevant that they could take advantage of and um, just actually create a partnership with your with the person who could help deliver uh, those kinds of services to you. So I really enjoyed those two. But when I'm looking at it from my perspective, I'm always looking at the business model and the customer segment. That's awesome. Tracy, I want to come back to you. We have our distinguished judges and you are, you guys are my partners and you do the judging for our business pitches at the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center. So did you guys learn anything from the judges who were part of the pitch competition? Anything you want to bring home that we should be looking at, that we should be utilizing? Questions, analysis, share. Okay, well, there was so much um, great information, and I think the judges really did a good job there. I, I mean, it's always necessary to listen as close as you can to the pitches, see what stands out, but then that all the questions that you may have are answered as part of that pitch. I think there were one or two that maybe we felt there was something missing or we didn't quite understand, but I think everybody really did a great job evaluating everybody and that they got the whole message from from the pitch that's so important. Christina, you know, one of the things about the pitch for Women's Veterans Day was you didn't have to have a business, you could have just had a concept. So but most of the ladies that came in actually had a business, they were working in their business. But did you get anything special from the experience like listening to the judges on uh, what they brought to the table, how they looked at the businesses? Um, that we can bring back to the center as we look at our, you know, reinstating our pitch competitions. Yeah, I think the one or two key, key takeaways I had is most of the judges were asking or wanted to know about multiple revenue streams. So we can't put all of our eggs in one basket. So we're always looking to see, and I think the, the judges brought this forward uh, to see what were, what were opportunities available to diversify on the revenue stream and the customer segment. So I found that that they were really, I don't want to say sticklers, but I felt that they were very aware um, that if you went down one rabbit hole, that wasn't good. So um, they were very astute in that assessment, I think, about making sure that uh, the, the uh, businesses, whether it be concept or already in business launch phase or expanding, what are they doing to grow that business and how many different segments can they touch? So I think that the judges really were looking for that. That's awesome. So Tracy, you know, we've decided this is going to be an annual event, our uh, Pitch Women Veterans. So we'll be bringing this back next year. Hey, what do we need to do to make this bigger and better? How do we like take this to the next level? And what do we share with our women veterans? Because we don't have a lot of representation from Dallas per se. We know we got a lot of women veterans down here. So how do we get more women veterans excited about the process and getting involved? Oh, well, I, obviously, we, we should probably try uh, start promoting as soon as we can for that. Reach no. out to all of us, your, <laughs> your research partners as well. I mean, you can uh, through different, you know, partner with the different veteran groups, uh, find the things in Dallas. I mean, obviously, we always send refer our veteran women to you as well. Uh, but I think yeah, if we start several months or more in advance, people will know that this big event is coming up. You can highlight some of the great winners uh, and, and, and some of the different programs that they had. And I think it will just continue, and some of it is just time. Uh, it, each year will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I That's think just awesome. starting early and partnering with all that we can, and we will do our best to get the word out as always. So Christina, you run a veteran organization. What do we do to get more women across the state involved for 2021 and make sure we get a really great diverse group? I mean, I think we had an amazing diverse group this year. We had some of everything 
at the table some really interesting businesses. I was, I was super proud of the ladies. Um, but what do we do to get more representation across the state and across um, industries? Well, I know that uh, at TBC, we definitely have a huge database of women veterans and we want to leverage that and the database that we have at Veteran Entrepreneur Program because we do have um, folks all over the state. One of the things I, I wanted to jump on uh, that Tracy mentioned, if we could start earlier, let's say we kicked it off in January, perhaps we could get 20, 30, 40 women in, or women business owners, right? Wow, that are veterans, yeah. And then start doing maybe um, the competitions uh, earlier on. So by the time we get to June 12th, we're talking the creme de la creme, and then each have um, each one of the women uh, pitch for maybe 15 minutes or something like that. Cause I'd like to get in more in depth at that point, number one. Number two, I did love the fact that Bunker Labs was there to help uh, host and sponsor. I thought that was really good. And if maybe we could um, encourage sponsorship growth in that regard, that would be great. Uh, especially those that are working in entrepreneurship, either be incubators or accelerators. Uh, that'd be wonderful to have that and maybe potentially um, universities like the Cox School of Entrepreneurship at SMU or somehow get um, local and community uh, uh, support, even though it's from all over the state. And then if we have enough time, people that are in El Paso or they are in Abilene or wherever the Valley, they could come there. So it's something to think about. Hopefully we won't have to do everything remote. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. I got my first two committee members. Thank you, Tracy and Christina. We'll get started <laughs> meeting as soon as possible. I love it. I thank you guys so much for jumping in and, and volunteering. You guys are awesome. Did we lose Michelle? Michelle, I wanted to give you just a couple of minutes to talk about your experience. This was our inaugural event. You were one of our first distinguished judges. Um, we've got about one minute left before we get to 12 o'clock and we start talking to our okay. winners. But tell us what that was like for you. Uh, I loved it. I was very impressed uh, with the... Um, uh, contestants, a uh, couple of recommendations. Uh, I know the state of Virginia uh, does pitch contests with their annual conference, and they actually have people coach the contestants over a, a couple of months before. So by the time they get to June, they are killing it, right? So I, I think uh, there's some people who are in Texas who I'm sure are experts at, uh, at um, um, coaching uh, uh, businesses and it also helps them be refined so when they go in to ask for money right they're already ready they got it down and it's it's um, it's it's perfect but I really enjoyed it and I'd love to see more women veterans take advantage of this opportunity because the more we can communicate uh, our value the better I am so glad you volunteered for 2020. We are excited to have you come back as a judge. Thank you so much. Awesome. She pulled me in. She pulled me in. She pulled me in. Of course. So now, so now we're getting to our, our, you know, what we've all been waiting for. The Veteran Women's Enterprise Center, if nothing else, we are committed to, you know, bringing women veteran entrepreneurs to the forefront. We're so excited to talk today to our winners and really talk about their experience. And we want this to be a conversation. So, you know, I gave the ladies a couple of questions and, you know, you know me, I'm gonna try, I'm telling you now, I'm gonna try to stick to those. Mommy, jump around a little bit. So I'm gonna give each of you an opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourselves because I hope you took the time to read their bios. These ladies are off the chain, like seriously. And they just came on very humble and like, oh, okay, I'm here. But these ladies are really doing amazing things. And there's a lot that we can learn from them about their journey and about how they're progressing. And even right now in COVID-19, challenges are opportunities to excel. That's what I believe. And so we want to make sure that we look at how each other, we're, we're overcoming these challenges and, and how you can take some of their steps and some of what they've learned and help make your journey easier and more progressive. So I'm going to start with Alicia. And Alicia, I want you to go ahead and do me a favor and tell our guests just a little bit about yourself. Highlights. Give us the highlights. Thank you so much, uh, VR, for that uh, introduction. My name is Dr. Alicia McKaye, 
and I own GXA. GXA is located in Richardson, Texas. I'm also an Air Force veteran. I uh, have been the owner, co-owner as well as the co-founder for over 10 years. And basically, uh, I do a lot of things inside of the organization. Uh, and for over a number of years, entrepreneurship is all about knowing what, doing whatever it takes to get the job done. And that's what I've always been able to do for a number of years. And so we, I really like what I do. We, we provide IT support for other small to medium-sized businesses throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We are a local company. We're a small company, but we are mighty, mighty in force. Uh, we have pro provided service over a number of years for well over uh, 200 small to medium-sized businesses throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I must definitely say that our customer satisfaction rate, which is posted on our website as of today is at 95%. So we pride ourselves on giving excellent customer satisfaction and making sure that our small to medium sized businesses are up and running because that is essential to our economy. So we're part of that process and we like what we do as far as delivering IT support. We do networking, uh, we provide IT consulting. We also provide uh, disaster and backup recovery. Uh, we can give you a, if you hire us, we can assign a virtual IT manager to your space as well as a virtual CIO to make sure that all of your IT is going to be up and running efficiently, which is very, very uh, timely during this particular season, because ultimately what has been keeping our economy going right now is technology. Yeah. So that's what I want to share uh, just a, a, about myself as well as the organization that I am a part of. Alicia, thank you so much. And Erica, I want to kind of go back and forth so we get a feel for what both of you bring to the table. Erica is our Audience Choice Award winner. And, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, Erica, your military experience and your company. So I spent 10 years in the U.S. Navy. I was a gunner's mate Ooh. and I worked with small arms and uh, vertical launching systems, which are Tomahawk missiles, SM2 missiles. And I used to program the missiles um, on destroyers. Um, I, <laughs> I, it was a hard labor. I, uh, my body just didn't hold up. And after 10 years, um, I was medically retired. Um, I spent two years in the military with a lot, trying to change my health habits, trying to, lots of medications, lots of um, doctor visits, trying to fix things. The military finally said they couldn't do anything about it. So I had to move back home. My parents had to help take care of me. And um, through a process that we did with naturopathic medicine and using food as medicine, um, I was able to get off all the drugs the military had me on, um, lose weight. And my sister, who's a biochemist, helped me um, start my, start my um, all natural sweetener blend and to um, help me get off sugar. So that's, the Navy didn't really, um, the Navy kind of pushed me into this business, right? It was a solution. We had to fix a solution for me. Um, I have a background in kinesiology. Um, I also have uh, all my pre-med requisites. Um, I, my plan after the military was to be a chiropractor, but because of my health was so bad, I had to change career paths. And I always loved business. I always loved helping other people. And that's kind of how I fell into this is um, it's our sweetener blend and our cheesecake solved the problem for me and gave me something that was really delicious to eat and kind of get past and have something to get me through those willpower weak weaknesses. Right. Um, and that's that's kind of where that's kind of my story. <laughs> You're muted, VR. I'm muted. Well, yeah. I met Erica when she was getting her business started, and that's how we all connect. I refer her to TVC so she could get verified. We were trying to get all of those things done, but that's what we do. We've got to make sure that when we meet each other, we share information, we help each other get connected, and look where Erica is today. And, and she still ends in telling her whole story, so I, I'm <laughs> going to dig deeper. Make no, make no mistake about that. So, Alicia, I want to come back to you and talk a little bit about what made you sign up for the pitch? We're talking about this being an annual event. Um, we had a lot of uh, female veterans that did sign up, but what made you sign up for the pitch? And then after you signed up, you know, what was the process like for you? 
Okay, so I initially saw the pitch on Instagram. It was a post uh, that just came across my phone. And I said, wow, interesting. I did, I, you know, I was aware that they were looking for uh, women veteran owners. And so I fit that particular profile. So I went ahead and signed up online. I, I didn't know if this was real, honestly. Like, I didn't know if this was a phishing exam, a phishing test, because, you know, I'm in IT. So I'm, I'm always looking, is somebody just trying to get my information? Uh, but it ended up being, you know, a real or the real deal and signed up. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to sign up is because anytime you get an opportunity to pitch your business, I think that's so important right now. You know, our business is, is slow as far as selling is going. And I really wanted to make sure that I have an opportunity to exercise my skills, my sales skills, even during the season of downtime. Um, and I and I didn't know I was going to be going in front of judges or anything of that nature. So I was shocked when I got on the first initial call. Uh, to find out it was so many people involved in this process. I thought this was going to be kind of private, offline. Uh, so I had no, no idea as far as how big this was going to be. But once I actually signed up and we went through the initial orientation call to establish expectations as far as the pitch was concerned and to actually establish the guidelines, um, I did have to put my hat on and, and really begin to think, how can, I, how can I pitch my business in five minutes? Uh, and, and I I signed up for the coach behind the scenes because it, it was from the from Bunker Labs uh, where we could actually get uh, get someone to actually help us and we could practice our pitch. So I took I took up you know basically went up on that challenge and I said someone needs to hear my pitch before I do it so I can refine it, get my slides together, and really make that ask. Uh, and so I went when I did my practice, you know, did my my orientation. Uh, and then it was showtime on the day of the actual event. It was a little nerve wracking uh, because, of course, it was so much that was going on and everything was online. But once we got in there and we began our pitches, I stuck with my script, definitely uh, stayed with my ask. I knew I needed to make sure that no matter what, I got to that ask before that time expired. So once I, I hit that ask and my mic went off, <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, I hope people heard my ass, but I think they did. They got the point. So that was that was a great experience for me. Um, I really enjoyed that process. It is very tough to go into a pitch competition, but once again, I learned a lot uh, in, in regards to refining my conversation when it comes to t telling someone about my business. Erica, I think you're up next. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear. <laughs> um, okay, so Erica, what made you sign up for the pitch competition? And then what was the experience like for you? So I got an email from Bunker Labs since I'm on their email blast and just letting us know about it. And I like to make an effort to, to support the military community because the military community has always done so much for me. And I, I like doing these pitch contests just because it helps me refine my business plan. It helps me every year, every time I'm doing one of these pitches, I have to go back, look at what I've done, re-forecast my numbers and kind of um, update stuff. So it kind of gives me that push to go in there and do those numbers instead of always working on sales or trying to find a new contact or working with a new business partner. Um, it makes me kind of sit down and do my numbers and I do well with competition. So if I, so I like to, I'm like, oh, competition. Oh, this will make me do the things I need to do to make my business better. So that's, that's one of the things. And then also um, BR, I saw she was a part of it. And like BR was saying, she's helped me through my process. Um, back when I was starting, it took me nine months to get my business incorporated. And um, there was so many problems and um, VR kind of stepped in there. I told her what was happening. She gave me a contact. And literally within a week, they found all my paperwork and I, my business was incorporated. And that was back May of 2017. And I had been working for six months before that or nine months before that just to get incorporated. <laughs> but uh, so I just love being a part of this community. And um, that's why I like to do the pitch contest. That is so awesome. And, and, and thank you for that plug, because again, um, as I said, when you guys were in the networking room, 
Um, connecting you to the resources you need to succeed is not a cliche for us. It is literally part of our mission statement. We wanna be able to help you make those connections. We don't do everything, but we need to know everybody that's doing everything so we can keep you guys connected. So I'm humbled and honored to be a part of that beginning process. And I'm so proud and excited to see what you're doing now, Erica, with your business. And I know big things are down the road because we're looking at being healthier and doing things in a healthy way. And what you have is like cutting edge. And so now what we need to do is just get it in front of those right people. So we've got your back and once again, if you ever need anything, you know, reach out, let us know how we can help and be a part. So Alicia, I want to come back to you for a second and talk about after the pitch. So you've already done the pitch. So, so what? Did you make any new connections? Did you meet any other ladies? Are you working with anybody? Like what's the aftermath of being a part of the pitch? Absolutely. So I, I have had a, a couple of meetings since after the pitch. Um, I had an opportunity to meet, uh, I cannot think of her name, but she she's over the, the hub certification for the state of Texas. Kelly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move my business uh, forward in getting this, the certification for hub. Um, I also got an opportunity to connect with Michelle. Uh, she was also one of the judges on the panel and she introduced me and I've never been able to, I've never seen this ever in my life, but uh, for other minority uh, business owners, Black women running IT companies. I have new friends. I have three new friends. They all sit around the United States of America, and they do exactly what I do. Um, our businesses are very, very similar, and I have not seen any Black women owning managed service provider uh, IT companies, and so those are my new connections. Uh, and so I'm so excited about that. I'm also looking at getting the, the certifications as far as veteran-owned and women-owned certifications. So we are transitioning our business to, uh, to, act, act, to move me forward into getting those particular certifications. So I, I have some action items that I'm taking care of right now uh, that we're doing behind the scenes. Uh, so it, my entire purpose is to always think about what business I'm currently in and what business do I want to be in the next five years. Damn. And I do know in the next five years, I want to be veteran owned and women owned, minority owned, certified business so that I can open up and give myself the road for other people to find me. My service is impeccable, but I want that I want to create a road for people to actually locate my business and, and make those right connections. So absolutely, we are, I'm in, I'm in, the wheels are now on the road. And I'm so appreciative of you, VR Small, because you've even talked to me uh, as well and, and really are helping me through this process. So we're getting, we're in motion. I love it. And I want to, I want to speak to that because what Alicia said is so important for every female veteran, a uh, spouse, woman that's on the line with us today. The, the SBA final rule on women on small businesses and um, economically disadvantaged women on small businesses goes into effect today. And you will not, after October 15th, if you are not certified WOSB, be able to do business with the federal government. So this is timely. This is important. We want to get you guys all connected. We are thinking about combining our coffee and contract program with our next level business um, transformation series this summer so we can help women get ready before October. We were gonna launch this in the fall, but we're looking at the timeline and saying, no, we need to get you guys in here now so you can be certified by October so you can get to the table. And the other thing that Alicia said about having new friends, all of us should be making new friends because those requirements for women owned and doing business you have to meet certain qualifications, but if you can't meet the qualifications by yourself, guess what? You can bring a sister along and she can fill in the gap, but she also has to be certified. So at least she's checking all the boxes, woman, at minority, veteran. You want to check all the boxes that you can. So when you get to the table, you have a greater advantage, but we as women veterans have the ability to lead because we can get other women to tables that they can't get to without us. So we can take those leadership roles 
and start bringing all of our community together. And I want you guys to think about that and realize you're in a position of strength. You just have to use it. So I want to come back to you, Erica, and I want to talk a little bit about what's been the experience for you after the pitch. Have you made any connections? Has it been a benefit to you? I've made tons of connections. Um, I had women that have connected me with um, APHIS. Michelle has an APHIS contact here in Dallas, which is was on my business plan of where I'm wanting to go. And they've just been great for bouncing ideas off of telling me what I need to do to get to the next step. Um, I have been introduced to programs like SKU where I'm looking at going through that program to help me do what I need to do to get into the APHIS's and the uh, grocery retail chains. Um, but the process um, I really was focusing, I've been focusing on getting a new website up and I have been spending time working with my SEO, diagramming all the pages out, getting all my products on my page. They're not there today, but they will be soon because literally this has been, this has taken hours and months just trying to get all the information I need to update it. And, um, but that's kind of just looking at this realizing that I need to pivot my business. Um, but the, but the, anyway, the, uh, the people that I've been introduced to have been great. Oh, I've also been invited on as a, um, speaker for veteran optimize one of their, they've asked me to do speaking engagements, talking about experience with these kind of pitches and stuff. You guys can read my lips, right? That is so awesome. <laughs> Because I know I keep muting myself out. So because we, we're in meeting and, and who's ever speaking goes to the forefront. So I keep muting myself out so I don't, you know, cut you guys out. And then I keep forgetting to mute myself back in. But that is awesome. So now we want to get to the nitty gritty. And we all know that we're in this era of COVID-19. And I'd love for you ladies to share, you know, how are you pivoting, repositioning, and pushing through this whole um, ordeal with your business. And I know, Alicia, you were saying things had gotten a little slow. So how are you managing this era of COVID-19? Um, and so one of the things that's been very uh, imperative for me to manage during this particular season has been my networking with other small business owners uh, to keep me abreast with what are the laws that are going on. Uh, also doing, uh, you know, I have small business owners in my network that are advocating in Washington, D.C. in regards to the PPP loan. And so one, the group and organization that I'm connected with that has been very vital for this particular time is my 10,000 small business organization. That's the Goldman Sachs, uh, 10, uh, uh, Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business entrepreneurship program that's specifically designed to support business owners, as well as this program is designed to help support business owners during you know very tough seasons and that has been very vital for me during this particular season if you are a small business owner even if you don't fit in the category of women or women owned or or minority owned anyone can actually apply to that particular program uh, and it, it can be found online at 10ksbapply.com and so if you're if you're thinking about going or want to be a part of another networking group that's very strong that can help you navigate all of the different waters out there when it comes to what's available to you as a small business that is a, a networking group i would highly recommend also other things that i've had to do i've really had to, you know we had covid that was a threat to our business but now because covid is the numbers are increasing in the state of texas one of the things that we've had to consider and, and what we're thinking about now is what if one of our employees get COVID, how is this going to impact our business? We are mm -hmm. a small business. So we had to definitely shut our building down. Um, and so we I'm also a, a, a building owner. And so we have to make sure that our that our employees, number one, are, are healthy. Um, and that they're, they're safe and that their families are, are safe. And so all, our team has to work remote because of the fact that the ramifications of COVID, you know, taking over our business could be detrimental. So those are things that we were we are discussing behind the scenes is how do we actually prepare that if one member in every department gets COVID because the numbers are rising, that's something mm -hmm. that I've put out there for our leadership team to begin to think about. So not only are we having to think about, 
you know, COVID when it comes to those, that's an external situation. But now because it's becoming so close to home, now we have to think about what happens and put some measures in place if, our, if someone on our team is really impacted. And if we can afford to still continue to pay the person if they're out for 90 days fighting COVID. Those mm -hmm. are the conversations that, that we are having uh, behind the scenes, as well as I'm having to really pivot into 2021 and really think on, our, on, on what we need to focus on because our business is slow. So one of the key objectives that we are focusing on is process optimization. Um, we are really focused on making sure that we have our processes documented, making sure that we can, we, we have, everything in place to train new people. We are hiring during this season, even though my business is down a little bit financially, we've, we've taken about a 15% hit. I'm still actually going to hire because I, I want, we have a lot of reactive tickets that are coming in and we almost can't keep up. If, if someone calls in sick right now, my team is being so inundated with so many tickets that are coming in that we, we have to go ahead and put in some protective measures in place to make sure that the team is able to answer all and resolve all the client problems on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm actually out there still hiring, still in the streets hustling, trying to make sure that even though the money is not coming in, the support is still being carried out effectively with our team at this time. So those are kind of like three different areas that I took you in. Getting a good network is one, making sure you're connected with other business owners. Number two, um, you know, preparing your business. So if someone inside of the organization gets COVID and then of course, number three, what are you, what plans do you have in place to improve the, 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 your service or your product that you're actually delivering Ours is process optimization, and then I got to get ready for 2021. Thank you, Elise. That, see, that's awesome because so many businesses need to be doing just that. Am I, am I muted again? No. no. So, so many businesses need to be doing just that. Thinking about the future. It's not just what's happening right now. And I think what you guys, what you're doing to hire more people, that's smart. Because things are going to start to trend. And when they do, you don't want to be behind the gun. You want to be ahead of the gun. You want to be able to take those businesses and say, I need to be open. I need to get these things in place. Who do I call? You want to be ready for those calls so that you can make that money. If you're not, they're going to call somebody else. Because they're looking for those immediate response so they can get moving. So I think that's super um that's super innovative to be looking ahead while a lot of people are just kind of standing still. That's a word to everybody on the line. Now is not the time to stand still. Now is the time to figure out what's that next move. What's my next move? Not just what's happening now, but what's going to happen moving forward. And I think the key word is, where's that next opportunity? Where's the next opportunity for my company? And am I prepared and positioned? Remember when opportunity knocks, they're not just going to keep knocking and knocking and waiting for you to get to the door. When opportunity knocks, you need to be ready to open the door and leave and take advantage of that opportunity. So you've got to get your company ready. Those are great points, Alicia. Thank you so much. All right, Erica, tell us what's going on in your arena. Manufacturing food. This is a whole big area and people have been having shipping problems and all kinds of things. So how is COVID-19 impacted your company and, and what are you doing to pivot and reposition and, and push through? So at the beginning of the year, it felt like this was going to be the best year of my business. Uh, Mar uh, January to March, um, I had so many events scheduled and um, I was forecasting like gigantic numbers. So I hired a new person and then they came on board the end of March and everything stopped. Um, literally from March to May, Every single farmer's market event I had scheduled, every single one of them was canceled. Mm -hmm. um, but, and two of my stores went out of business and one of them ended up closing. Um, so I, I still had four stores open that I was able to keep pushing my product out to. But I just took this time to really try to do more automation of my business. Um, I've been so slammed with work and focusing on sales that I just, there was little things that I just wasn't focusing on. So everything from moving on my finances to QuickBooks Online, 
having ever, you know, doing more of an optimization, putting those price rules um, with different wholesale customers and re retail customers. So now that process is just helping me streamline. Um, I'm working on getting more accounts and really targeting down my niche customer, figuring out who that is and getting my product in those hands. Um, I just closed two more new stores. I start today. Um, I delivered going to be off of Inwood and Lovers at a new, it's a CBD store, but they're using my, they're using the tinctures to put onto my products because it helps, um, it helps go through the body slower and really process well. So it, I, I was in nutrition stores, um, meal prep stores, um, uh, more organic, uh, non-GMO um, businesses. And I'm trying this, we're going to work with this uh, CBD store to see how that works, just because cheesecakes go great with all kinds of stuff like that. And so I'm opening up new channels. And then, like I was saying, um, my website has it like it, what it is now is what it's been for like the last year. And I don't have any of my new products on there. I haven't updated the information. It's really not user friendly. And so um, with my new employee, we spent time designing and InDesign each new page is going to be there. I'm uh, working on my SEO. So the alt text, the captions that go to each picture, just getting those keywords that really that fit my target market um, and um, getting all that information into the hands of my website designer to help put that all in there. But of course, because of COVID, everybody's doing this and I should be next on the list, but all my information's turned in. So hopefully I just really feel I really need to focus on the, um, the online sales. I have a lot of influencers um, through uh, Instagram and Facebook that love my product, but anytime they post about it, people can't get all the products that um, like my dry ingredients, like the stevias and my um, first rate, which is what I developed to put into the cheesecakes and the pecans. They can't get those products unless they contact me. I send them an invoice. You know, the process is just too long. So yes. So um, I have spent so much time just working on making it easier for it to get into people's hands. I'm also working on developing recipes with all my sweeteners that's going to go on my website so people can make their own recipes to go with my products um, to make it really easy so they're not having to guess how to change it from this recipe with what I'm giving them. Um, and the next step is going to be doing YouTube videos um, to show me cooking and the steps that it does with our products. So I have a more of a margin on my dry ingredients versus my uh, CPG products. Um, so I'm looking at splitting my business um, and maybe licensing the um, dry ingredients to the cheesecake and pecan business. And um, so I'm working with lawyers right now to figure out what's the best way to do that. But just the markets, I've researched the markets for the cheesecakes and, you know, like that's a $270 million industry, but the, the gluten-free baking blends and the all natural sweetener blends, that is just crazy billion dollar industry, right? So um, that's, I've spent a, I've, COVID has let me step back, really focus on what needs to be uh, taken care of to get to the next step. You... Okay, I've been sitting here just holding it in because you touched on so many things, you and Alicia. So we did a workshop earlier um, last spring called Thrive and it's just an acronym and the T stood for this, think. Seriously, take the time to think about your business where you are and where you actually want to go. And that's what both of you ladies are doing and that's what everybody online and on Facebook needs to be doing you've got some down it's not really downtime but you've got some some delay time where things aren't as busy and as crazy as they might have been if erica was out there doing all those market fairs and making all the prize and having to follow up on deliveries and all of that has given her a chance to really rethink her business look at new opportunities you should be looking at where are my other funding streams where else can I get money from? And I think that's great what you're looking at, all of these different opportunities and how you can position your business to be that go-to for different items. And Alicia is looking at how she lines up her employees to be ready for the turnaround and be ready to take these orders and service these clients who 
may not be ready to open right now, but we're coming back. I don't think anybody's sitting at home going, I want to close my business. Everyone's sitting at home saying, how do I stay open? What's that next step? How do I stay above the water until we can get back on track? And when everybody starts to get at the, at the start line and the, and the whistle blows to go, you're going to have so many people like a marathon all running at the same time, bumping into each other. And who's going to be there to help people kind of figure out how do you find your lane and how do you take the lead in that competitive advantage for your business? And I think both of you ladies are working on that. And I think the other thing you've done, which you really haven't talked about, but you really highlighted your military experience, that discipline, that focus, um, that's doing whatever it needs to get the job done. Because, you know, they throw a lot of stuff at us and then they say, go do it. And we know we don't have everything we need, but all we say is, yes, sir, and we go and get it done. And that's kind of that entrepreneur spirit that's already embedded in us from our military experience. So that is so super awesome. So I want to open it up. I don't want to do all the talking. It is 1230. I want to open it up to the attendees and see if you ladies have any questions for our winners, any comments for our winners. Um, you can unmute yourself, but kind of like raise your hand or something so we're not all you know, talking at the same time. Or you can put your questions in chat and I will relay them. So you have two ways of doing it. You can unmute yourself, uh, but raise your hand so we're not all unmuted at the same time. Or you can put your question in chat. I know you guys have to have some questions. Come on now. You don't have any questions? Everything's been answered for you? All right, well, I, I, have a, I have a statement because Alicia did not tell you everything. If you didn't read her bio, we want to congratulate her because GXA was recognized as a recipient of the Inc. 5000 Award for one of America's fastest growing companies in 2014 and 2019, and Texas most inspiring company in 2020. So here we are in 2020 going through COVID-19 and who do we look to? Our judges selection as the winner for Women's Veterans Day, our pitch competition as one of the most expiring companies in 2020. Alicia, tell me a little bit about what that means to you to, to get that nomination, to, to be that company. Uh, well, first of all, to get that nomination out of, you know, basically 245 businesses in Texas were giving uh, opportunity to be recognized as the most inspiring company in Texas. And so that is a very big deal for us because of the fact that our team, like I told you, it's 20, but we are mighty. Uh, you know, Jesus only had 12 disciples and he turned the world <laughs> upside down with 12. So I'm working with 20. And I think that we got some things that we can very much so be proud of. And, and really to be an inspiring company means that we were able to step up to the, to the challenge and it's COVID-19. In COVID-19, we had to get ourselves uh, in, in remote uh, instantly. We, we had one week and we had one week to get our clients remotely. So we actually closed, we op it was 750 tickets that were open the week of COVID-19 and we closed all 750. That's what inspiring means right there. When you can step up to the challenge, our average ticket count in a week runs about, probably about 350. So we're talking about over doubling our ticket count size and being able to step up and do whatever it takes. And it was so funny because we chose a theme this year and our company, when we kicked off 2020, now we didn't know any of this was part of it. Our theme this year was whatever it takes. We had the theme music going. We put the, we kicked off this year. <laughs> and so we have basically established the tone. We, uh, we gave training and making sure that everyone, when you come to work, you need to be in the right state of mind and your energy needs to be right. And so, and there's some two, th you know, some things that you need to do behind the scenes to prep yourself to get ready to go to go to battle, because that's what you're doing when you're showing up on my team and going to work. You're going to battle. You get, we have problems to solve. You're on the battlefield, so you have to make sure that you are not a wounded warrior on the battlefield. You have to be ready and willing and 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 good on on front lines and ready to go so that we can keep America going because we are a part of that process. So for me, that's what it means to be inspiring, being able to step up to the challenge, accept it, 
not backing down from it. Don't run. Don't get scared. Just step right on into the fire and let's see what you got. So that's what that means for me. Inspiring. Girl, you better go ahead and preach. I'm about to throw up an amen in there, all right? Don't get me started. All right, so Erica, I know how you've been diversifying what, what you've been doing. Tell us if there's any more exciting things happening for your company. You have a question in the chat and they wanna know, can you talk a little bit about, more about how your product helps the body? So uh, everything, all my ingredients um, are all gluten-free, non-GMO, and then my all natural sweetener blends, they are very different than what you're getting on the market. Um, one of my secret ingredients is, that I have is stevia. And usually when you eat, when you try stevia, people think it has this nasty, bitter taste. It's disgusting. What stevia is, is a leaf. And um, where I'm sourcing from, they take 21 different species of the stevia leaf and they're only taking from the leaf, which is the sweetest part. And then when they process this, they're using a fermentation process instead of harsh chemicals or um, which is what a lot of other companies use because it's a quicker process when you use the chemicals versus the fermentation. And when anything's fermented, your body um, digests it better. Um, it doesn't have to work so hard to process any of those things. So my stevia is fermented. My low glycemic polyols that I also stick with the stevia to make the cheesecakes with our proprietary blend, they also are all fermented. Um, we found, my, since my sister is a biochemist, after doing tests with all these different ingredients on myself, I found that I was allergic to the chemicals that they were processing the um, sweeteners with. So you'll get a lot of all natural sweeteners, but then you find that they process it with chemicals. And um, through work with a, um, I also went to, it, got my blood work done to see what was happening, look at my gut, seeing what kind of problems my gut was having. And um, we healed my gut. We hit with food, meaning um, liquid, liquid minerals um, and going gluten free and then just getting off the sugar. So I found that I had a really bad sugar addiction and I hated the sugar free products that were on the market. A lot of them have maltodextrin, dextrose or um, fillers that go in there. And those fillers are what's also harmful to you. Another sugar-free product that a lot of people use is Multitol. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but all the sugar-free, like the Russell Stover and um, any of the sugar-free jelly beans, the licorices, all those are made with Multitol. And what that does, um, it is actually very high on the glycemic index, which means that you're real, it's, it's no different than sugar almost. Like sugar's around 100 on the glycemic index. Multitol is around a 60. My um, sweetener that I use for the um, cheesecakes and the pecans is around an eight to 11 on the index. Mm. I all, my stevia is a zero. And then also my other product that's called Top Notch, which is for diabetic ones, MS patients, that kind of thing. They're, those are the ones that like to use it. It's not designed for them, but I have a big following for those type of patients, uh, those type of people. Um, I see somebody asking me if, it's, um, if I have FDA approval. Um, what I do have is um, I have gone through the FDA for all my nutritional panels. My products come from sources that do have all your COAs, your certificate of, sorry, going back, all the military acronym talks, acronyms. get away from that. <laughs> so they have certificate of analysis on all the products, but um, at a certain level, under a million dollars in sales per year, um, the FDA doesn't require you to have everything. But what I do have is the FDA certified nutrition labels that go on all my products. Um, and I have all the gluten-free statements and um, purity statements that go with all my products that anybody can get. You, um, I, people, I have a lot of people that do testing with it. And um, one, of, one of my, I have a blog, one of my blogs coming out, a food nutritionist has Dexcom meters. She's done tests with Dexcom meters or Libra 2 meters with my cheesecakes. So 30 minutes after eating a cheesecake, they look at their blood glucose levels and they're getting, you know, every person's different. So you can, I can't tell you, these are the results you're going to get, but um, like a one to four milligram rise 30 minutes after eating a cheesecake is unheard of really for a dessert. And that's what people are getting with my product. 
Um, and then at two hours after, they're getting a drop in their glucose. So these are some of the information that I'm really wanting to bring to my website with the blogs that are going to come out, the information, and just showing people how to use the product. Because it is a, a little difficult to use, and you have to figure out, because you have to do all the measurements, and you have to taste it and figure out what's going on. But um, that, that's, that's kind of, I, I went way detail with all the crazy, <laughs> crazy words. You're probably, if you don't know those words, you're going, what is she talking about? <laughs> I don't know if that helps a little bit on the question that you're asking. No, but I think that's good because you we want to learn more about each other's business. A lot of us are B2C, um, but there's so much opportunity for B2B because even if I can't do business with you, I probably have clients that can do business with you. And I always tell you ladies, don't leave money on the table. And if you're not doing your B2B, you're leaving money on the table. If you don't have a referral program in place for both your clients and your colleagues, you're leaving money on the table. So make sure that you're not just thinking, oh, I'm connecting with my client, where your client can be more diverse than you think. Make sure you're not leaving those other opportunities to do business or to grow your business on the table. Now, I do want to ask you ladies, both, both of you a question. You can tell me one wants to go first. Um, one of the comments here is that you're both working on several ways to grow your business. Um, are either of you working with a business coach to solidify your strategy and ensure that you're focusing on the right actions to grow your business? So for me, I've had business coaches before. Um, I've had what is called business advisors uh, that have been assigned to my business uh, through, through the Goldman Sachs program, uh, as well as I have hired coaches in the past to really get us over a, a certain threshold when it came to our revenue. And now it currently, presently, I do not have a, a coach that I'm actually working with. If someone knows somebody that's, that's in that area, uh, would definitely like to hear more about the service. Some coaches are so expensive that I haven't been able to afford them, but I have, I do believe in coaching. I think it's good and it's a healthy concept to add it is a key component as a part of your business. I believe coaches can see your blind spots uh, in, in areas that you can't see it. So definitely for it, uh, but and, with, and I am soliciting requests if you know anything that I don't know. That's awesome. Erica, did you wanna share? Well, um, I have a few different mentoring groups that I work with. So I've been accepted into the University of Texas at um, Arlington's um, venture mentoring system. So I have a couple business owners that are, that have connected me with lawyers, trademark, um, you know, trademark lawyers and contract lawyers. And um, they've also connected me with just kind of looking at my process, looking at how, what I need to do next. I'm also um, score. I have a mentor that is helping me with my SEO. I have a mentor that's helping me with my marketing. And then um I, oh, Bunker Labs. I also have been a part of them too. Um, and I was a part of Honor Courage Commitment Inc. I went through their, um, their program to help get my business going and in the right step. I'm, I had a, also um, a person who owned a CPG company that, um, that I was working with. And then um, when it came down to, he wanted to be my partner. And then it became, and then he was, it, like I didn't have enough um, security on my patent and information to keep it with the resources that this man had and the gigantic companies that he had before. Um, so it, that's been hard for me to be honest is finding somebody who is a coach who I can trust, who doesn't want to take my intellectual property and use it for their own stuff. Um, um, so I'm, I'm now looking for somebody who is specific to the CPG world and can help me in that direction. Um, I also was looking at the Hilton Rewards. Um, I met somebody there who works. So the Hilton, there's a special group that um, once I send them my business information, they're going to look at getting me in their program to help mentor me. And then maybe I'll be able to get into um, the Hilton's. Awesome. Awesome. That, that, that is really exciting, ladies. And so I have to say it, because um, I would be remiss if we didn't. The Veteran Women Enterprise Center offers mentoring. We also are a SCORE Center. I'm a certified SCORE mentor. 
as everybody knows, my focus is strategy, organizational development. But as um, I think Alicia said it or Erica said it, you can have several score mentors. So you can have a mentor that does IT and somebody that helps you with finance and somebody that helps you with marketing. And so you don't have to have one mentor or just one coach. You need to find that right person for you and where your business is and where your business is going. So we're at 1247. I don't see another question on Facebook and I don't see a question in the chat, but I do wanna give our partners another opportunity to just make any quick announcements they have about their programs or their businesses um, that they wanna share with you, workshops, uh, seminars that are coming up. Stephanie, can I start with you? Let me, let's get you unmuted and then I'll get you Absolutely. spotlighted. Absolutely, Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. This has been so wonderful hearing about the wonderful businesses from both Erica and Alicia. And thank you guys so much for sharing your story and your accomplishments as well as your challenges because that's so important for business owners to hear these things because it makes it more relatable and then it gives them some inspiration to move forward. And I'm Stephanie Broughton. I am one of the Minority Women Business Enterprise Department coordinators for Dallas Independent School District. So I pretty much help women and minority business owners navigate through doing business with the district. And we do have opportunities that are available at the district that you can find out from our website. We also have a mobile app that you can download and you can download that mobile app by searching D-I-S-D-M-W-B-E in your search in your app store. And we also have trainings, workshops, webinars available that you can find out about our upcoming events on our website. We have one that's coming up, which is very, very crucial for those who want to do business with Dallas ISD. We have recently updated our forms. We just had a webinar a week ago covering our construction forms, which is the CSP. We're going to have a webinar next month that's going to cover the goods and services forms, which is focusing on the MWBE portion of the proposal. So. I will put the website of our site onto the chat so you guys can get that information. And I definitely encourage if you, um, either Erica or Alicia, if you're not a registered vendor with Dallas ISD, I definitely encourage you to do that. And I can be of assistance to get you started with that process. Thank you again, VR, for giving me the opportunity to express that information. And I look forward to hearing from you ladies soon. Thank you guys so much. Stephanie, thank you guys so much at Dallas ISD for being a partner, coming on board with us in 2020. Our theme is building. And so we're really excited to continue to build partnerships and relationships and keep our women connected to the resources that they need. Christina, are you with us? You're next on my, on my row here. Yes, thanks, VR. Sure. Um, yeah, thanks for the good conversation today uh, and from our two... Uh, winners, uh, Erica and Alicia, uh, a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, if you don't already know, I'm also the hub outreach coordinator for the Texas Veterans Commission. So if you are needing assistance with being becoming hub certified with the state, I'm happy to help you with that and send you some tips that will help you. So feel free to reach out to me via email. With that said, if you're not already familiar with the Texas Facilities Commission, for the next eight weeks, they're doing an online seminar that's geared toward hub contractors, even though uh, they're bringing um, construction uh, primes. And the reason, even though you're not in construction, they have uh, the key decision makers on the presentation. So if you want to sell to a construction company or they need help with IT or they have special needs of some other kind or they need some product services, I would definitely attend at least to uh, find out who the major decision makers are and those in procurement. Additionally, those um, Webinars are being recorded, and I believe that Yolanda, who's the hub coordinator for the Texas Facilities Commission, is putting them up on her website. So to me, anytime you can get a real person, that would be great. Um, also, TVC comes out with the, their e, our eVets newsletter monthly. It just came out uh, yesterday. It has a distribution of 100,000 people, state of Texas. So to your point, Via, uh, VR, one more way to get people involved in next uh, next year's pitch. Um, the entrepreneur program, we normally try to feature a small business in that, a veteran-owned business, and we try to do that every month. 
So um, if you are interested, et cetera, reach out to me. I normally do the blurb, uh, the initial write-up, and I send it to the comms team, and then they do their tweak, and they probably call you. But I try to use that as a way to bring, uh, you know, shine a light on all the veteran businesses in the state of Texas. Um, also, check out our entrepreneur um, page on the website. On there, I have a government contracting guide that I think is beneficial. I'm going to be updating it soon. That really talks about um, some best practices around uh, local, state, and federal contracting. If you want to get involved with that, our website is www.tvc.texas.gov. Then you can check us out or send me an email. I'll be happy to send you that info. Thank you. Christina, put all that information in chat. And just so all the participants know, the chat is downloadable. So you'll be able to go and download the chat. And then again, this is running live on Facebook. So if you missed anything, you can always go back to Facebook and review again. Uh, Tracy, do you have any updates or anything you want to share with us? Thank you again, uh, Christina and Texas Veterans Commission Entrepreneur Program for being a great partner. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you, VR, and thank you to Erica and Alicia. Great information today. Uh, just for those that don't know, uh, the Texas Women's University Center for Women Entrepreneurs does offer uh, free business advisement as well. Uh, we do funding. We also help with research, and we do a lot of professional development. Uh, if you go to our Facebook or our website, uh, you will find videos of the programs that we have. The second Tuesday of every month, we have Women Rise. A, it is now a virtual breakfast, but yesterday was great. We had Amanda Smith, who does the Dallas Girl Gang. She has over 45,000 uh, fans online. So it's a great way. She talked a lot about social media. You can find that there uh, and watch the video. And you can also watch all of our past videos from our virtual events on our YouTube page as well. Everything that uh, all our social media is under TWUCWE or Texas Women's University Center for Women Entrepreneurs. So we'd love to have any of you attend any of our virtual events, or again, if you want to go online, uh, you can see all the past videos of what we've been offering. Awesome, Tracy. Thank you again to TWU and the Center for Women Entrepreneurship for your partnership this year. Uh, we're looking forward to building on that. And Shirley, you're up next. Um, okay, that, sure yeah, I'm here. Good afternoon. And, and uh, repeating what the other ladies have said about uh, Erica and Alicia's presentation. Uh, and I can't wait to taste the cheesecakes now. So uh, <laughs> looking forward to that. But I am uh, Shirley Staten with Avid Coach. I am a business coach and I work with the small and medium sized businesses to help them uh, set a strategy that allows them to reach the uh, goals that they are looking to achieve uh, to uh, grow their business. And uh, one of the areas that we do focus on is looking at what you're doing today and where you wanna go but then in a uh, partnership with some of the other ladies on the uh, call, I also add uh, opportunities to help you find more business. So I'm online with a lot of the uh, companies that have diversity uh, programs that's looking for diverse vendors. And so I'm also a resource to help you find opportunities so that you can uh, continue to uh, connect with these companies and to grow your business. So I would love to have an opportunity to just sit down and talk to you two, as well as any of the other ladies on the uh, call. Uh, if you have questions that I can answer, I'm always available, but uh, I'm here to support VR and the uh, veteran women's and we do appreciate everything she has done to continue to reach out to veteran women's and to grow this program. So thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you for your partnership. Shirley is our business coach, and she is the young lady that decides who the winner of our 30-second elevator pitch competition is. Along with Holly, I saw Holly. She must have had to jump off 
Uh, but Holly is also our confidence co coach and the two of them get together and make it happen. So um, we may have lost our winner, but who did you and Michelle decide was the winner of the 30 second pitch competition? I'll make sure I get their email for registration and send them their gift card. Well, actually the winner is still online and the winner is Erica. Um, what? <laughs> so all the ladies did good. So uh, you guys all did a great job, uh, but uh, the kind of have to work on your time so that you can make sure that you're within the guidelines. But thank you all. So Erica is also awaiting her $250 audience awards award. And now you will also be getting a second, a separate $60 gift card for your 30 second elevator pitch just to continue to encourage you to do well. We can continue to encourage everybody that participated to do well and to continue to work on your pitch. Again, we said our theme this year is building. It's building your personal and professional confidence. As Alicia said, you want to take every opportunity to talk about your business and to strengthen your ability to present your business. We want to build your B2B relationships, sales, and referrals. And we also want to build your business connections. And that's the next thing I want to just remind you, July is staging for the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center for the rest of the summer. Please give us your input on our Monday morning message that includes our partners. If you have ideas and concepts, please share them with us as we prepare our calendar for the rest of the summer. Trending Thursday Tips is moving from a series of different workshops that we're gonna have a series for the whole month that connects. So tell us what you need. What kind of technical assistance, what kind of tool, what kind of focus works best for you? These are not designed for me. These are designed to meet the needs of our women entrepreneurs. And the only way we can meet your needs is if you share with us what's going on. Also remember we did receive funding for COVID-19. So if your business has been impacted by COVID-19, we will be running our next level business transformation. It's our mini masterclass series over the summer, August to September. And that technical assistance will come with a grant. If you wanna know more about that program, make sure you're connected to us through our newsletter. All of the details and links will come out in the newsletter. It will be a limited application process. So make sure you're watching, you're staying connected so that when the application comes out, if you're interested, you can apply and get connected. And last but not least, if you're looking for co-working space, you lost your commercial space, or you're looking to reconnect, we will be opening up our co-working space January 2020, maybe fall, January 2021, maybe fall 2020, depending on COVID-19 comes, but start taking a look at what we offer. We have a very unique setup and we wanna get you connected. So if there are no further questions, no further comments. Alicia, tell us what you're doing as a philanthropist before you leave. Yes, yeah, so VR Small, part of my winnings was $1,000 for winning the pitch competition. So what I want to do, VR Small, today is give that money back to the Veterans Women Enterprise Center and basically help to build up your facility. So we are donating that money back to the facility because we believe in women veteran owners and we stand with women veteran owners and we are for your efforts and everything that you're doing, VR Small. So we're gonna be adding that to our North Texas Giving Day as a part of our matching funds. If we're able to raise that thousand dollars, we're gonna put another thousand to it. So we want you guys to all get in the game. Every year we do North Texas Giving Day. We don't make it a big deal because we know our businesses, you know, you guys are working hard. But this year we want you to get in the game. We want you to get in the game and help us get to the next level and show our sponsors and partners that you are behind us, not just with talk, but with money. So get ready to get your call. It's not going to be big. It's going to be small, but every little bit is going to make an impact. And we know how that small community fundraising works. So $5 from everybody in our Facebook and everybody in our Instagram and everybody in our Twitter equals a whole lot of money. And it doesn't hurt anybody's pocket tremendously. So get ready to get committed. Thank you so much, Alicia, for everything that you're doing. Thank you, ladies, for coming on today. It is, in fact, 1 p.m. We are closing out Women Warriors winning the business battle, and we wish you all the best this summer. Stay connected. Have a great day, ladies.
Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you so you. much.